so we'll do a uh, pencil drawing of this old sewing machine. I'm going to use a range of pencils from HB down to about 4B. A couple of different erasers, a kneaded eraser and a plastic eraser. Uh, we'll do the drawing on this uh, Canson's uh, Classic Cream drawing. This is just a little 9 by 12 pad, which is a good size for a pencil drawing. We don't need a really big sheet for this. It's paper that's got enough tooth that um, as I draw, there'll be some resistance. And that'll give a little drag in the pencil, give me some good control. Right now I want it to say this is a very rough approximation of the shape of the subject. And I want to work as lightly as I can, put as little pressure on the pencil as I can get away with. So I take my kneaded eraser, I'll flatten out one side of it, make sure we've got a smooth surface without any um, sharp edges that'll leave streaks, and we'll just lighten the whole drawing until we can just barely see it. This will allow us to go back and use that as our guide and state the proportions a little bit more correctly, we hope. I'm not going to attempt to suddenly say it is precisely this shape, but I'll say this is a slightly closer approximation. And again, trying to keep a very light touch with the pencil, I'd like to let the tooth of the paper, the texture of the paper, do the work. Now I'll find a few landmarks on the sewing machine. Very, very large screw over here. Knob directly above it. And I'll lighten my edges again until I can just see the shapes that I've put down and it's easy to make those corrections. And at this point, now that I know where the big shapes are, I'm going to start going in and describe some of the smaller subshapes. Then we're getting just a little bit darker, putting just a little more pressure onto the pencil as we go in the drawing. It's nice to have the uh, tooth from the uh, cans on drawing paper, which gives me a little better control through a little bit more drag on the pencil than I'd get on a slick sketch paper. Take my kneaded eraser and lighten it back down. So I've just got a little sheet of sandpaper here. And I'll just sand it down so that I've got a flat side. Uh, so if I hold the pencil now on the flattened side, I get a broad, smooth stroke. If I hold the pencil on the opposite side, I get a fine line. I want to make a mark for where's the top of that knob supposed to be. I've got a sharp edge to do it with. Find that screw there. That's an ellipse. And we'll put a little pressure on the bottom of it. Starting to locate the forms with a little bit more assurance. I'm now more confident that the basic shapes and proportions are largely correct. All right, proportions are looking good. I think we'll lighten it and we'll start getting into a little sharper uh, modeling of the form, building up stronger darks and try to leave some areas light. I'm going to actually start putting in some of the um, darks using hatching strokes as a way to build up those darks. I may take a sheet of scratch paper, put it underneath my hand, as I work, use that as a way to keep from dragging my hand through all that graphite and building up a lot of dark smudges. The cans on paper does have a pronounced texture, and so it's fairly slow to smear, unlike a slicker sketch paper. I've been using a paper with a rather hard surface because I've been doing quite a lot of erasing on it. And the surface isn't damaged at all. It's a soft eraser. It's a kneaded rubber eraser. Um, which isn't terribly abrasive, but I want to be able to race as much as I need and still not have to worry about potentially damaging the surface. Now the cans on drawing papers generally give good attention to erasability. So let's see if we can go back, strengthen some of the darks. I can get a fairly thin, fine, and very accurate line with the pencil on the paper. The texture isn't too deep for that. Take a look at how it's going. Okay, not too bad. So I've got a 4B, and that's as soft as I'm going to go. 
I've got a little bevel point on here, and I'm looking for the places where the shades get the deepest. And still, I'm getting the darks, building up the darks by repeated passes over them, not by putting a lot of pressure on the pencil. I don't want to engrave the lines into the paper. This is a fairly tough, hard surface, durable paper, but I still don't want to be pressing so hard that I'm pushing the line below the surface of the paper. And let me refine that edge a little bit. Take the stomp, take some of those hatches and throw them into shadow. To bring the contrast of the drawing up a little higher, we really should go back and think about where are the highlights? Where are the brightest lights on the form? And as I'm erasing those out, I'd like to get something a little sharper to suggest the metallic surface. Take a bit of plastic eraser. I've taken and cut just a small piece off. I don't really want to work with that big one. Now, as I want to refine my edge with a couple of deft strokes, I hope. Got a little erasing shield, just a little metal template. We'll put in a few of these. Pull out a sharp highlight. The good news is because we have a cream colored paper, we can actually go one step further. We can take a white chalk pencil and we can get a white for these highlights that's just a shade lighter in value than the paper itself. Canson has a range of uh, different drawing papers from the pure white to this. Uh, I chose the classic cream for this for the traditional feel and to allow me to be able to add these highlights uh, to the drawing. I'm going to keep seeing something else that could be done to the drawing, but you're going to get to a place where you start recognizing that although you're making some very, very small changes in the drawing, it's not making any substantive improvement in the drawing as a whole. And anything I could add at this point would really only produce trivial results in terms of clarifying that sense of form. Yeah, at this point, I think the drawing is for all intents and purposes nicely finished.